All right, we've seen some very basic square roots. Right now, we're going to look at a rule that's going to help us with both simplifying and multiplying square roots. And instead of just giving you the rule straight away, I'm going to kind of develop the rule for you by looking at two different examples. So first, let's look at the square root of 25 times the square root of 4. Now, we haven't talked about square roots and order of operations. Square roots fall under the same category as exponents do for order of operations, so we're going to evaluate these square roots before we multiply. Though, if we have a square root sign and there are operations inside, they act as grouping symbols for those operations on the inside. Anyway, for this problem, we start by evaluating the square roots. The square root of 25 is 5, the square root of 4 is 2, and then we multiply 5 times 2 gives us 10. Let's look at a slightly different problem, the square root of 25 times 4. Now in this case, the square root symbol, the radical symbol, acts as a grouping symbol for everything on the inside. So we need to do all of the inside operations before evaluating the square root. So 25 times 4 gives us 100, and then we can take the square root of 100, which also gives us 10. Notice that we got the same answer when we took the square root first and then multiplied, or when we multiplied first and then took the square root. Now this doesn't prove that that always happens, but you could do this with other numbers and you would get the same result. And we can write this result as a rule. It says that if we have the square root of a product, a times b, this is the same as the product of the individual square roots. This is the product rule for square roots. All right. Now, just like we simplified fractions to make sure the numerator and denominator were small as possible, we're also going to want to simplify square roots so that the inside of the square root, which we call the radicand, is also as small as possible. A square root is simplified when the number inside the radicand contains no perfect square factors other than one. Let's look at an example so I can show you what this means and how we can simplify them. Let's simplify the square root of 300. Now 300 is not a perfect square, so we can't just take the square root. However, we can simplify it. 300 contains a perfect square factor. We can rewrite 300 as 100 times 3. And then we can use the product rule here when we have the square root of a product, we can write it as the product of the individual square roots. So we can write this as the square root of 100 times the square root of 3. And once we've done that, we can actually evaluate the square root of 100. The square root of 100 is 10, so we end up with 10 times the square root of 3. And this is the simplified version. The radicand now is 3 which is much smaller, and it doesn't contain any perfect square factors aside from one. So we have simplified this radical. Let's look at a few more examples. Let's simplify the square root of 75. Now 75 is a large number, but it does contain a perfect square factor that we can pull out to simplify it. How can we factor 75 so that one of the factors is a perfect square? 75 is 25 times 3, and 25 is a perfect square, so we can break it down like that. And then we can evaluate the square root of 25. Square root of 25 is 5, so this becomes 5 root 3. Let's do another one. Let's take a look at the square root of 72. Now, we want to factor 72 
so that one of the factors is a perfect square. And I know that 72 is 9 times 8. So we can break it down like this. The square root of 9 is 3. So this is 3 root 8. However, 8 still contains a perfect square factor. So we can break that up even more. We know that 8 is 4 times 2. So we can break it up like this. And then the square root of 4 is 2. So we've got the 3 out front times 2 times the square root of 2. And 3 times 2 is 6. So we get 6 root 2. We could have done this in fewer steps if we had recognized that 72 is also 36 times 2. By pulling out a larger perfect square first, we get 6 root 2 in fewer steps. So really, we can do this all in one big step if you can find the largest perfect square to pull out. Or if you don't see the largest one, you can do it in a series of smaller steps, pulling them out one at a time. Now, I want to encourage you to watch the videos linked below because there are several more examples involving negatives, involving variables, and trying to simplify the square root of something with multiple variables in it is much more challenging than these basic problems. So it's very important that you watch those examples as well.